Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the lecture on theater today. Um, this is the last non-play specific lecture that we have uh, Thursday. Uh, we'll be doing Top Dog Underdog. Um, rather, sorry, uh, next Tuesday, we're going to be doing Top Dog Underdog. I realized I hadn't published it, uh, just to give you a little more extra time. But theater today. Now, in some sense, the answer to like, what is theater today? Where are we? Um, is to just kind of say, well, refer to the rest of the class that we've taken, right? So, because where we are today in the theater world is absolutely um, an accumulation and evolution of everything that we've talked about previously. Every person, every play, every idea, every criticism, every place, all of it um, is rolled into what theater is today, right? Uh, and uh, new spurts uh, and in directions that we haven't even thought of are happening all the time. Um, and so, in some sense, in a um, kind of broad sense, theater today, where are we? It's kind of a difficult thing to answer, um, but an easier thing to answer about where are we in terms of theater today is to look at more kind of nuts and bolts on the ground about what is theater in the United States. So um, when we think about uh, theater uh, in the United States, we think about Broadway, right? And I mentioned this in our uh, Origins of Broadway lecture, um, but, most of the time, most of the people who have heard of Broadway aren't really quite sure what Broadway is in many ways. Um, most people know that it is a street and that a lot of theater happens on that street. But what is Broadway, right? Um, we know about Broadway because the Tony Awards, right, the, um, the, the, the most prestigious theater awards in the country, right, they're the Broadway Awards, right? Um, but Broadway is something that you might be thinking. It's not just kind of theater. It's very specific. Now, what is Broadway? Broadway is actually the collection of theatrical performances on 41 stages in New York, all but one of which are in Midtown Manhattan, which might come as a surprise. That means that if you are not performing on one of those 41 particular stages, you cannot win a Tony Award, right? Uh, for like best musical, um, best new play, any of that. It is in 41 particular stages. And in order to qualify, a theater must have at least 500 seats to be considered Broadway. Now, here's a map of, uh, you know, part of Midtown Manhattan. Um, and you can see I've outlined uh, where most of the Broadway houses are, and I've dropped pins on the locations of each of the stages that qualify, well, that who shows performed on those stages qualify as Broadway. There's one way up north uh, in Lincoln Center uh, that that technically counts, um, but it is not in what is called the Broadway box down there. Now, that is actually a pretty small area, right, um, in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, if you were to measure the blocks that it's on by acreage, it would be 109 acres. And for comparison, Estrella Mountain Community College sits on 75 uh, acres. Uh, and so if you have two Estrella Mountain Community Colleges side by side, I don't know why it keeps doing this. Um, if you have two Estrella Mountain Community Colleges side by side, that would cover more space than the land upon which the entirety of Broadway sits, right? So uh, even things in New York, like Shakespeare in the Park, which is a large theater in Central Park, those shows are not eligible for a Tony Award. Um, down at the Public Theater, a very large theater uh, in, uh, uh, in a village, that does not qualify. A very large theater um, in uh, Brooklyn, at uh, the Brooklyn Academy of Music has a very big stage, bam, that does not qualify as Broadway, even though it has enough seats. Um, a show that opens in Chicago or Phoenix or San Francisco, those do not qualify for Tony Awards because they are not on those 41 physical stages. Which then implies that, well, we've heard of Off-Broadway, what is that? Now that is theater in, broad in uh, New York that is not Broadway. It is professional theater uh, uh, in New York that uh, on stages uh, whose audience uh, contains 100 to 499 seats. That is considered off-Broadway. And the awards for the off, for off-Broadway are called the Ovies. Now, then you get the, uh, 
<laughs> increasingly ridiculous off off Broadway, and that is professional theater in New York that seats 100 or fewer, um, or it is non-professional New York City theater, right? And so people in New York City theater talk, if they have a very, very tiny show, they add a ridiculous number of offs to the beginning of, well, that's like off, 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 off Broadway, this really obscure thing. But that's uh, where those terms come from. So the demographics of the Broadway theater, what kinds of people actually buy tickets to Broadway, not off or off, off or regional theaters, but to Broadway themselves, what kind of person buys a ticket? Um, I'd like you to think and imagine like what race, what gender, what income, where they're from, all of that, just for a second. And we'll see if your uh, suspicions are correct. Um, and it's not a quiz, you don't have to be correct. Um, but if you thought the average Broadway theater ticket purchaser was an affluent white woman, you would be correct. Uh, in terms of buying tickets, two thirds, um, two to one, uh, women outnumber men. Uh, three to one, uh, white people outnumber non-white people in terms of the Broadway theater goer. The average age is 41, which is actually younger uh, than I originally thought. The average household income, average household income of Broadway theater goer is $2,000 a year. Uh, <laughs> the average household income is two six-figure incomes. Uh, which is uh, not, uh, it is not middle class. Um, where are they from? Well, a little over a third people are from the New York City metro area. About half are from the other places in the United States and 15% are from abroad, right, international. Uh, most have a college, uh, uh, are uh, college graduates. 41%, uh, almost half have a graduate degree, right? Either an MFA or a PhD. So it is a, uh, highly educated, uh, wealthy, young-ish, and I say that being 38, so pardon me for saying 41 is young-ish, um, white woman is the average Broadway theater girl. Now, when you talk about uh, the average Broadway uh, theater goer's income, that directly kind of implies uh, how much do they cost? Right. How much does a Broadway ticket cost? And I put this in reverse order. Uh, so going down at the bottom, these are the average ticket prices for the most expensive Broadway play or musical. Um, average ticket prices, not kind of uh, the ticket price that you would necessarily pay because scalpers are, you know, a problem in theater. In theater, but look at the bottom. In 2009, um, there was a play called A Steady Rain, which was a not a musical but a straight show um, that had I think Daniel Craig and Hugh Jackman in it. Right, um, but the average price was one hundred and thirty-nine dollars for a steady rain. Um, the next two years, it was similar, right? For *The Merchant of Venice*, and that one starred Al Pacino. Um, but then after that, uh, in twenty twelve, tickets started going up a little bit further. Uh, *The Book of Mormon* was the hottest ticket for four years, um, and you know, one hundred eighty-two, one hundred ninety-eight, one hundred eighty-nine, one hundred seventy-three. And then Hamilton became the hottest ticket, uh, jumping up to 188, 276, 288, 290. Now that is the average uh, initial price, right? Um, it was not common to find online that the cheapest ticket that you could get was upwards of $500 for one seat uh, for Hamilton. And so uh, Broadway certainly is uh, uh, something that is very expensive which does a couple of things. Um, it means that rich people can afford it more uh, than middle class or poorer people. But it also means that um, uh, the people producing the shows know that they are giving a product as it were, or a service that people have spent a lot of money on. And so they are much less likely to, uh, to do something that's risky. Um, because if someone is paying you uh, $300 to give them a show, you want to make sure that they have a good time and that they enjoy it. And that can become more important than taking a risk, which is why Broadway also has the reputation of uh, uh, being uh, cautious in its uh, plays that it puts on. Let's talk about unions. Aha. Um, <laughs> so 
uh, theater world, um, acting, uh, producing, directing, uh, uh, technical crew, uh, they are uh, very heavily unionized to that whole industry. Now, uh, the first one we're talk about is IATSE. Um, it's the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees. Now, this is a union that covers most of the technical crew on stage, on professional stages, and actually in the film and TV industry, right? And so you have stagehands, set builders, ushers, house managers, painters, carpenters, and whatnot. Uh, they're also involved in trade shows, conventions, um, you know, set up and tear down, that kind of thing. And also on a film TV set, they're the ones who do sound, gaffing, grips, lighting. They build the sets and everything. Um, and so IATSE is a, uh, uh, it has a lot of members. Um, and which is good and bad. It gives them more bargaining power, but it also means that uh, they have to negotiate between different interests. Uh, animators, animators are also on that as well. I forgot to mention that. Uh, you get to directors, right? On stage of the Stage Directors and Choreographers Society, the SDC, they represent directors and choreographers. Um, one of the things about uh, uh, theater as an industry is, um, that it would tend to have its labor behave this behave in the same kind of supply and demand economics that a lot of labor markets do, right? And the nature of the business is that a lot of people want to work in theater, which means that labor as a commodity is very cheap to buy because there's a lot of supply. And so the only way for uh, 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 theatrical professionals to not work for free or work for very little is to unionize and to um, have that kind of collective bargaining power or else nobody would make any living wage. Uh, for actors, they have a union too. It's called Actors' Equity Association, also known as just equity. Uh, it represents actors and incidentally, it also represents stage managers. Right? And we talked about what they did way, way, way far back. They kind of run the show. Um, from the booth. Now we also have, um, now there are a lot of professional large stages that are not in Manhattan. Of course there are, they're all over the place. Um, and usually these theaters, um, the union theaters, right, are represented by the um, LORTS, which is the League of Resident Theaters. It's the largest uh, association of theaters. This is not a union, this is an association. Um, and the biggest large regional theaters are members of LORT. Only nonprofit theaters may join. And so now we're going to go on a little bit of a tour, you know, uh, dip our toes outside of the confines of, uh, you know, New York City. And, you know, just kind of touch a little bit on other uh, major theatrical cities in the country, right? Chicago. It's known for the Goodman Theater, the Court Theater, uh, Second City, which is um, probably the most famous improv theater uh, in the country, and Steppenwolf, um, which uh, people like Gary Sinise came out of. Its awards are called the Jeffs, right? The Joseph Jefferson Award. Uh, Minneapolis actually um, has the most number of theater seats per person as far as a metro area. Minneapolis, you might not think of it necessarily in this way, but it is um, a very big theater town. Uh, it has the Guthrie, which is this uh, picture behind you. It's uh, relatively recently built. It's a great theater. Um, Children's Theater, the Jungle, Mixed Blood, Walker Art Center. Um, and uh, its awards are known as the Ivy. Uh, Philly has the Walnut Street Theater, which is the oldest um, uh, kind of continuously operating theater in the country. Uh, it, uh, yeah, 200 years from 1809. Uh, the Arden, the Wilma, uh, Lantern, uh, PTC uh, has their Barrymore Award. DC also has a lot of theater, Signature Roundhouse Arena Stage, where um, uh, the playwright Edward Albee had a lot of his um, premieres. Uh, we didn't get to discuss him much, but look him up. He's good. Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? That, that guy. Uh, Shakespeare Theater Company, Willie Mammoth, uh, they have the Helen Hayes Award. The Bay Area, you know, they have the Marin Theater Company, ATC, sorry, the American Conservatory Theater, Berkeley Rep Theater Works, which is a uh, uh, youth-oriented theater, right? It does uh, theater for young audiences, you know, teenagers and younger. And they have the, uh, 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 the worst named awards, the F SFBATCC Awards for the San Francisco Bay Area Theater Critics Circle Awards, just rolls right off the top. Uh, LA, uh, you know, 
known for uh, the other performing arts, you know, uh, on screen and film, but they also do have theater. Uh, Center Theater Group, Gaffin Playhouse, Pasadena, South Coast, they have the Ovation Awards. One of the issues about uh, Los Angeles theater um, that they have that other cities don't have as much because film and TV are so big because Hollywood is so big and that's where a lot of the money and attention goes. Theater is kind of left as kind of a second rate thing. It's kind of thought of as a backup. You know, there's stories all the time about someone having a lead role at, you know, Center Theater or like Geffen Playhouse or some of these big theaters in Los Angeles and then quitting, you know, during the run of a show because they got a minor role on like Law and Order SVU. Right. Um, that's the kind of problem that uh, Los Angeles theater has, um, which is why its theater community is not big as let's say like Minneapolis or um, Philly. We also have theater here, you know, the Arizona Theater Company, the Tempe Center for the Arts, ASU Gamage, Mesa Arts Center, uh, Theater Arts Center, uh, Theater Arts Studio. Uh, we have a, uh, 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 an interesting named awards. They're the Arizona Awards, which is great. Um, but yeah, so check out theater here. Um, there's good theater that is made here as well. Um, and that is all I have for you today. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a quick tour um, around the United States and talking about the different unions and organizations um, and Broadway as a concept. Uh, so thank you very much. I hope you all have a pleasant evening or morning or whenever you're watching this, and I will talk to you later.